Lexus LS460 is finally fixed and running and back on the road. Hello everybody, welcome to Marty Motoring. Today I'm gonna to talk about my LS460. It's been a journey with this car and if you've seen any of the previous repair videos or the last update, you'll know that it wasn't running for quite some time and I really couldn't figure it out in the last video. Well, fast forward about two weeks and it's running back on the road, driving great. So what changed? Let's dive into it and also dive into how much I spent on this for the repair versus what the dealership was gonna charge me. So we're here in my very messy shop and I parked the car kind of like this because it looks cool and I wanted to talk about it. I wanted it to be the focus. Uh, we do have my Ranger over there. You can't see it off camera. I've been working on that and driving that and we'll talk about that later. Uh, but the focus of this video is the LS460. Now, if you followed any of the repair videos, like I said, you'll know that the car was not running for the last eight months. I bought it in September, 2023, and then I started tearing into it because of a misfire after replacing spark plugs and ignition coils. So had a misfire, figured it was an injector on cylinder six, which is on the passenger side. So I dove into it and while I was in there, there's a lot of things you can do and should do kind of while you're in there. Um, so I did those things like valley plate reseal, new intake manifold gaskets, new valve cover gaskets, new high fuel pump or high pressure fuel pump gaskets. Um, just anything that leaked was fixed, any old gasket, uh, including the O-rings and gaskets and O-rings for the uh, fuel injectors themselves. So that was part of the repair as well. So valley plates resealed, injectors are sealed, everything like that. The passenger side was fixed with low mileage used OEM injectors. I didn't want to buy new injectors because they are three to four hundred dollars each and there's eight of them. It adds up um, and I just didn't really have that money to spend. So over the last eight months, I'll tell you what I spent here uh, when we get into that portion of the video, but I've been fixing this, troubleshooting it, having back together, apart again, <laughs> back together, finding an issue and having it apart again. So that was that happened maybe three or four times, um, but I really learned this engine and it's either time or money. I just unfortunately spent time. So the benefit of all that is that you can kind of see how this works, what it would take to repair. And if you have a similar situation, you know that you can do it. Because I went into it not knowing anything about this engine or direct injectors, having never replaced them. And I did it all and I documented it. So there you go. You can do it if it comes down to this. I mean, it, it wasn't fun. It wasn't super easy, but it's doable, um, especially with the right tools. In my calculation of what I spent, um, I'll have a spreadsheet for it and everything that'll be on the screen and in the link in the description below There'll be a link to the spreadsheet so you can kind of see everything part numbers all that kind of stuff um, I'm not gonna include tools or shipping because it varies so much You might already have the tools you might order everything on a certain site that's free shipping But we'll get into the cost a little later. What I wanted to start with was What happened since last video? So the reason I got an LS460 in the first place was I wanted a nice sedan. I had multiple Lexus sedans and I missed a sedan. And especially after the ISF not being very practical, this was the next step. All wheel drive, very similar V8, tons of room and it looked really cool. I got this from New York and that's where the good times really ended. Uh, it's been a headache ever since. So let's talk about the LS460 real quick. Unfortunately, it was one of Lexus's most unreliable cars. Um, it's kind of known as the most unreliable Lexus. And I don't know why, because a lot of the parts and part numbers and everything are shared with other Lexus vehicles. Like the 4.6 liter in this is not that different from the five liter uh, in the ISF. Direct injectors are a known issue. Um, not so much going bad, getting clogged, breaking, um, stuff like that, uh, valley plate leak, coolant leaks, uh, the, the gaskets just leaking over time, which I've addressed and fixed, thankfully. Timing chain issues, head gasket issues. The engine is not the most reliable. This has 215,000 miles on it, so I imagine it was decently reliable for the previous owners. Um, but I think uh, also a botched repair kind of led to some of this. So in all my research with the LS 460s, all of the, the direct injectors should have the same color band on where you plug it in. They all have like a mark, they call it. So it's either black, brown, I think there's yellow and green. This car had brown on the passenger side and black on the driver's side, which I thought was strange, but I said, hey, you know, it's been working all this time like that. I should just keep it like that. And maybe that's 
where I kind of went wrong and the mistake started. Among doing all the other maintenance and fixes, which went great, um, the injectors are something I always had a problem with with each time I put it back together and took it apart. Um, on the passenger side, there were there was a few that broke, so I ordered used ones, replaced them, replaced gaskets. That was all fine. Cylinder six no ha longer had a misfire, but on the driver's side, I never really thought about it because it was like, oh, they're all they're all the black mark. I'll just replace what I broke, just like the passenger side should be fine. Shouldn't have any issues. So that's what I did. And at first, I didn't have issues. But when you take them in and out a couple of times, there's always risk for something to go wrong. And on the sleeve of cylinder five, the injector, the tip, I found one of the Teflon seals that I don't have a tool to put those on and off. So I was just relying on what came on the injectors in good condition. Um, one of them looked broken and maybe shredded or wasn't lubed enough when it was put in. And that could have been on me. Um, I'm, I don't know where that went wrong, honestly. Uh, but when I pulled it out, I found that and I was like, that's the one that's misfiring. And I stuck a boroscope in there, saw some fuel in the cylinder and I was like, okay, something's, this is not spraying correctly. And when I, when I tested it, it sprayed a really weird pattern. I got a little injector tester and very strange pattern. And it's like, something's wrong with this. So I have three other brown ones that were good from the passenger side. Let me order another brown one and then make them all the same color, the mark brown. So that's what I did. And when I put it all back together, it worked. And I was like, why didn't I think of this to begin with? And I think it's because I was trying to save money, not spend extra money, kind of leave driver's side alone. If there's nothing wrong with the driver's side and just do the passenger side. But I also took out the driver's side. The only reason I would have removed that is if I broke the connectors. And unfortunately they get very brittle, the plastic in there and they break. So that's why I removed them in the first place or else, you know, if you don't have to touch them, don't. <laughs> that's my advice uh, with this whole thing. Everything was removed and replaced multiple times. Um, so fourth time's a charm, I guess, because now they're all lubed up correctly, all brown, they all work, they're all low mileage, um, brown uh, injectors, and it runs great now. Another factor to this was also the battery. I have a battery that seems pretty good, uh, but when I had it on the tender, it never got above nine volts recently. So there's a power problem. Well, when I jumped it on a jump pack, I could run the car off a jump pack that I have and it ran great. And I was like, this is, this is perfect. So I went to Walmart, got a $150 battery with a three year warranty, popped it in and there we go. So this is how the engine looks when there's no covers on it or anything like that. Uh, this was, this broken, cracked. I had to repin some wires, repin the throttle body. Uh, we see the new battery here and that's really all you could see from here. It's really hard to tell what's under the intake manifold until you get into it. So if you do wanna see that and you wanna kinda of see my process, check out the older videos that I have on this and you'll see that. Looking at this now, I kinda of know how everything works, everything I've replaced, and it's like, wow, this is gonna be good to go for a long time. So with all of the repairs, here's how much I spent. Again, the spreadsheet link will be in the description and you can see what I have on the screen as well. These were from various retailers, including Discount Parts Monster, eBay, Amazon, Rock Auto, and even Walmart. I'm not gonna list everything I've used just because it's gonna take forever and make this video way too long, uh, but you can see it on the spreadsheet and I will tell you the grand total, minus shipping, minus tools, minus all that kind of stuff. So on parts alone, I spent, compared to the quote I got from my local Lexus dealer, that's a savings of over $6,000. And now this car is fixed and it works great. But now I'm plagued with the question, do I want to keep it? Does it even fit my needs anymore? I have a Ford Ranger. I have a Hyundai Ioniq 6. That's for my business. That's I'm in a two year lease. And we also have an ES330 2004. So that's a little bit on the older side. This would be a cool replacement for it, but it's way thirstier on gas, more for oil changes, uh, just a lot more all around to maintain. So it's not really the cost effective car compared to the ES330. I did just change the oil on this and that was only like 40 bucks in oil. It's 9.5 quarts. And the other thing is this is all wheel drive. So you're on 93 gas or premium gas here in Pennsylvania, we have 93. A lot of other states only have 91, but this is getting like 14, 15, 16 miles per gallon. I, it's really hard for me to get 18 in this, even on the highway. I, I think it's just, it's heavy, it's big. It's an engine with some mileage on it. It's all wheel drive. All of those factors kind of add into it. 
Uh, I am leaning towards selling it. If you are interested, I mean, let me know. All the fixes have been done and you've seen it all in the video and you've kind of seen my whole process. Um, so you pretty much should know everything about this car at this point. I'm gonna lose money on it because values have gone down. Mileage has gone up a little bit, but I've spent money on it. So I am in a two year lease for my business vehicle and I've really been focusing on work and I started my own business. So I use that mostly and it's an EV and I get a lot of hate for it, but honestly really like driving the thing. And this kind of seems archaic compared to that car because of how fast and efficient and easy to drive that car is. I don't visit gas stations. I just waited 30 minutes in line at the gas station for this. Of course it was Sam's Club, but you know, at 4.50 a gallon or whatever it is, if I can get it for 4.20 a gallon and I'm filling up, I save a couple bucks. So uh, yeah, this was like a $70 gas bill just straight away because it does take 93. So it's, it's one of those things like, how often am I gonna drive this? Do I still even need it? Does it work for me? Um, this is inspected for in Pennsylvania until October. I have to renew registration soon. So I kind of like to sell it before that just because I don't want to put more money into it at this point. But I am glad to have it fixed and I can drive it around for a little bit here and just kind of enjoy it like I never did, ne like I never got to when I first got it. Um, and then I think I'm ready to move on. There'll still be a ton of car content on this channel. I just don't know that it'll involve the LS460, but man, this car is nice. It's got the LS500 wheels. It's got the triple beam uh, LED headlights, which I guess is a, a great option. Um, has heated and cooled seats. It has uh, parking sensors, headlight washers, uh, the F-Sport grill. There's a lot of like nice features on this car. It has the wood inside. I hate to let it go just because of how nice of a quality car it is. It doesn't make sense for me to have an extra car laying around that I'm paying insurance and all that kind of stuff on. Drop in the comments, what do you think of this car and the repair and would you do it yourself? Because you can, you, you kind of see everything I've done. It's definitely possible. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, follow along, even if it's not with this car, I have a ton of other videos and other content. So if you like what I'm doing, I appreciate that. If you hit subscribe, helps the channel out. I wanna say thank you for watching and as always, keep those wheels turning.